Hi, my name is Marco Cavallo, and today I will present a personal work uh, uh, that started as a hobby a few years ago. And the topic revolves around doing computer graphics in more than three spatial dimensions, a field sometimes referred to as uh, hypergraphics. Uh, as a quick introduction, let me start by clarifying what I mean by dimensions. In this paper, a dimension refers to an independent direction into which a geometrical space extends, not including time for now. Uh, if we consider a point uh, and we extend it in one direction, we obtain a line. Uh, then if we take this line uh, and we extend it in an orthogonal dimension, we obtain a surface, or in this specific case, a square. Uh, and we can continue by extending the square into a three-dimensional cube. Along these lines, we can imagine a fourth dimension, uh, which we'll call W, and extend the cube uh, into the so-called tesseract, or hypercube. Uh, similarly to how the cube was bounded by six faces, uh, the tesseract is bounded by eight cubes, uh, and we can see in this image how we can unfold its geometry. Uh, before revealing the content of this presentation, let me try to add a little bit of context uh, to explain how this concept of extra dimensions came to be, uh, which is also one of the factors that motivated me uh, throughout this work. So, uh, the late 19th century saw an incredible scientific uh, uh, innovations, such as the identification of the electron, uh, the studies on radioactivity, electromagnetic waves, uh, and X-rays. And to be honest, I could really talk uh, uh, about this for hours. But what it is important to know is that these discoveries made us realize that human perception is limited. And that some uh, super sensible reality that we cannot see or touch might actually exist. Uh, this occasionally allows science and supernatural theories to intersect with practices such as alchemy and I'm not joking, uh, spirit photography. Uh, and our world was uh, uh, seen as uh, uh, more of a boundary of some unperceivable higher dimensional reality. Uh, and a first geometrical example of this concept uh, uh, appeared in 1884 uh, with the well-known uh, novel Flatland, in which the author describes a set of strange phenomena experienced by the inhabitants of a 2D world, uh, only to discover that these phenomena were simply manifestations uh, of uh, our 3D world. Uh, this uh, also had a huge impact on art, uh, with cubist and futurist artists such as Picasso and Boccioni uh, showcasing in their work uh, uh, distortion, denial of uh, three-dimensional perspective. Um, but the concept uh, of fourth dimension rapidly uh, shifted towards the concept of time, with Einstein's relativity and Minkowski's uh, space-time continuum. And for instance, in this, space, uh, in this period, we have the concept of block universe, uh, where uh, we as humans uh, move across 3D time slices of a 4D hyper-universe. Um, but it was only towards the end of the 20th century that the emerging super string theory uh, predicted uh, the existence of up to 11 spatial dimensions. Uh, and together with the hardware improvements in computer graphics, uh, brought interest back uh, to 4D spatial dimensions uh, with the first 4D simulations and the related uh, artistic endeavors. In order to present 4D content to the human eye, in one way or another, we have to decrease its dimensionality, which unfortunately causes a loss of information. And in this sense, uh, uh, the focus of early visualization and graphics research has revolved around uh, using te rendering techniques uh, uh, to indicate 4D depth. At the same time, uh, researchers try to better understand spatial relationships in higher dimensions, often using interactive uh, manipulation as an exploration method. Uh, in parallel, uh, some perceptual studies uh, try to get a better idea of how the human brain uh, could retain for the information. Um, in this work, uh, 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 rather than trying to improve on existing techniques, uh, we try to shift the focus uh, from the visualization of ab abstract shapes uh, to a broader concept of hyper-universe, where we do not just put our attention on a single geometry, but we try to build uh, a world around it. Uh, specifically, we try to generalize existing 3D technology as to interface uh, uh, 4D content. And we deal with problems related to creating content, 4D mechanics, and authoring worlds where both uh, 3D and 4D elements uh, can coexist. Finally, we aim at providing a comprehensive and self-contained baseline to help others continue on these topics. And in that sense, uh, get ready to see a lot of content in this presentation. So all the graphical examples in this paper have been generated through our own very simple 4D engine, which we implemented as a Unity 3D plugin. And in the following slides, I will try to go over the basic concepts uh, of rendering 4D content. And the goal here is not to present some fancy algorithm, 
uh, but to give you an idea of how simple for the notions can have a surprising effect uh, uh, on the viewer. Uh, the first concept is the one of projection, uh, for which we support two methods. Uh, cross section takes the idea of slicing, therefore the geometry, and in this example, uh, we consider the intersection of a hyperplane with a tesseract, and we can see how the intersection generates a triangle in each of the tesseract bounding cubes. And we can then compose these triangles together as to form a 3D mesh. The second method is Fraston projection. Uh, that is a simple generalization of existing 3D projection and allows us to uh, display for the depth uh, through the use of two distinct vanishing points. Uh, the geometry here is first projected into 3D space uh, with a custom for the projector and then uh, into screen space uh, with the usual uh, uh, 3D camera projection. Um, while cross section is easier to compute uh, um, and uh, it's often found in uh, interactive applications, uh, first some projection is really mostly found in uh, books uh, about computer graphics. The next concept uh, is 4D transformations. Let's start by imagining a 4D weapon shooting hypothetical uh, 4D bullets with a spin that makes them sinusoidally move uh, along uh, uh, the fourth dimension. As the bullet intersects uh, the current cross-section, its geometry changes until the object uh, exits the cross-section, with the interesting effect of making it invisible for a certain period of time. Uh, in first projection, instead, uh, the object simply becomes smaller as it gets further away from the viewer. Uh, regarding rotations, we are used to think that the intersection of three axes uh, uh, generates three uh, perpendicular planes. Uh, the reality in four dimensions uh, is that uh, four axes actually generate uh, uh, six uh, orthogonal planes. And in this sense, uh, uh, we define uh, three additional rotational variables, uh, T, U, and V, uh, to define for the rotations. And in cross-section, a rotation around uh, T, U, V uh, has the effect of stretching the mesh in one direction. Whereas in fast projection, we have the effect of seeing the tesseract's uh, uh, bonding cubes uh, uh, turn inside out. Uh, regarding scale, uh, let's consider three objects and assign uh, one of them a much higher uh, hyper depth uh, than the others. As the viewer moves along W, uh, the effect is that uh, other objects will more rapidly exit uh, the current cross section, uh, while the first one uh, will remain unchanged. Uh, in this sense, uh, we can see uh, hyper depth uh, as a measure of uh, how an object is resistant to change or how much it is persistent. As far as physics, the big question is whether uh, 3D physics uh, would generalize to 3D. Uh, and the answer is uh, uh, probably not, especially considering the implications of Gauss's law. Uh, however, for the sake of practicality, uh, in this paper we assume 3D physics to be a simple generalization of 3D physics. And in this example we can achieve interactions uh, such as a bullet first becoming invisible, hitting and revealing a hidden hyperplane, and then bouncing back on the ground uh, uh, on the ground until it rolls again out of the cross section. In the next section, we are going to dive deeper into what it means to create a 4D universe, starting with its structure and then discussing uh, about the ways to create and author its content. The first thing to consider is whether this 4D universe is Euclidean or has any compact dimensions. As an example of compactification, we can imagine a roller coaster uh, winding its way through a 3D space while its movement really can be described with a single independent variable. In a similar way, we can imagine a 2D wormhole or even parallel worlds, uh, possibly connected by a bridge, uh, where 2D beings do not realize living in a higher dimensional space. And in this sense, we do not necessarily need uh, 4D content uh, or even 4D movement uh, uh, to build a 4D universe. Another topic uh, is the ability to move uh, in uh, uh, higher dimensions. We definitely know humans cannot, at least voluntarily, move into the fourth dimension. Uh, so a person would not be able uh, to escape from a 3D cage, for instance. Uh, according to physics, certain subatomic particles can, however, move in uh, higher dimensions. And uh, if for practicality we extend this concept to microscopic beings, we could explain something like a ghost easily entering and exiting uh, the 3D cage. Finally, uh, scientific experiments show that any higher dimension would have to be bound to an incredibly small extent, which is not really practical. 
Uh, but this is, however, worth considering uh, uh, limiting uh, the extent of W uh, mostly for performance and usability reasons. Uh, as a practical compromise, in this work we adopt a simple Euclidean 4D space uh, where certain microscopic beings uh, can perform 4D movements under certain conditions and where dimensions are theoretically unbounded. Uh, once decided its structure, the next step uh, is to figure out which content uh, uh, would populate such universe. The reality is that not much for the content is available and the easiest way to generate it uh, is to take 3D perfect geometries uh, and extend them uh, like we did for the Tesseract. And to be fair, we can achieve some decent effect uh, even uh, uh, with simple geometries like the animation of these 14 uh, uh, hyperspheres. Uh, however, this solution is too often uh, uh, abstract uh, and uh, lacks realism. Uh, the solution I personally like the most uh, is analogy-based design, which tries to consider how objects uh, and mechanics work in 2D and in 3D, and then tries to extend uh, this concept uh, to 4D. Unfortunately, this method is likely gonna fry your brain and is in general very time consuming. Another idea is to try to build upon the promising research on 3D shape generation and use embeddings uh, to generate hypothetical 4D entities. Uh, but this suffers uh, uh, from the lack of uh, uh, 4D data um, and with the lack of, I would say, behavioral semantics uh, associated with uh, 4D geometry. Uh, our simple solution in this work uh, is to extend existing 3D assets into 4D through lifting and titerization uh, with the benefit of obtaining familiar shapes, uh, but the drawback of sacrificing the higher dimensional significance uh, of such objects. Now that we have the content, we need to realize how to place it into space. And one technique is what we call for the offsetting that allows us to author content in normal 3D environments and then place it at different W coordinates. In this case, uh, the viewer can move along the fourth dimension and transition between uh, the different environments with a warping geometry effect uh, uh, based on their hyperdepths. And this allows us to achieve mechanics such as reaching objects hidden behind 3D obstacles. Something to consider while authoring is the amount of intrinsically 4D content that we want to introduce in the scene, which will highly impact uh, the computational footprint of our application. Uh, instead of extending all the 3D assets into 4D, our strategy in this work is to maintain a balance of 3D and 4D objects in the scene, uh, where only the latter are affected by uh, 4D movements, leaving 3D objects uh, always visible. Um, another technique for transitioning between two apparently 3D, 3D, uh, 3D environments is based on rotations. As an analogy, uh, try con to consider a 2D being able to move only left to right and upward downward. Uh, if we apply the rotation around the vertical axis, the entire world around him would change inexplicably but we, as 3D beings, uh, would be easily able to tell uh, what happened from a 3D perspective. Uh, similarly, uh, we can imagine uh, placing content in different 4D subspaces and use 4D rotations to transition between them, with the effect uh, of warping uh, the environment around the viewer. Uh, now that we have outlined a number of ways to conceive a hypothetical 4D universe, it's time to settle on a subset of them and present our concrete use case a video game we developed called uh, uh, Across Dimensions. The idea here was to create a non-didactic 4D application not too far from our common experience of 3D. Uh, the game has uh, an FPS uh, uh, feel with puzzle and adventure elements, and the player can navigate a classic 3D world populated by 4D dimensional beings that hide in the environment and, might, uh, and may suddenly appear to confront the player. Uh, the game currently runs uh, on laptop with standard mouse and keyboard interactions and in this early screenshot we can see for instance how a 3D header uh, needs to be used to show the W offset of 4D beings uh, with respect to the cross section in which the player is currently situated so that he can identify the position of invisible elements. Um, on top of the standard uh, uh, 3D navigation, the player can accumulate a limited amount of crystal energy and use it to move along uh, the W dimension, uh, allowing him uh, to pass the walls and reach otherwise inaccessible targets. Uh, the game also relies a lot on the concept of animating uh, or morphing uh, for the geometries based on, the, on simple 4D auto translations. In certain instances, the player can perform direct manipulation using dedicated uh, on-screen keys that can be used, for example, to mold an object into a bridge and use it to proceed beyond a steep drop-off. 
In this case, it's often hard to imagine a priori uh, what shape a 4D object would assume. Uh, so we try to visualize floating previews of the effects uh, of direct manipulation to help the user. Um, as another example, a specific camera movement in Fraston projection can be used to turn a barrier into a temple uh, into which the user can then enter and proceed in the game. Um, a set of tools uh, uh, can also be used uh, to bring nearby for the objects to the current cross-section or reveal their geometry, or as we previously saw, uh, they can be used to shoot bullets uh, fluctuating along the four dimensions that can be used to hit invisible targets, uh, such as four-dimensional enemies uh, that constantly try to escape the current cross-section uh, as to avoid being noticed by the player. A key challenge that we tried to solve was trying to harness the potential of having a 4D camera with two completely different projection methods at our disposal. In the game, we applied cross-section projection by default due to its simplicity, so that 4D objects moving along the fourth dimension appear to gradually enter and exit the current cross-section hyperplane. In this case, the 4D projector shares the same XYZ components as the 3D camera, a setup that we call synced cameras. At any point in time, we can decide to keep the 4D camera fixed at its latest position, switch to Fraston projection, and allow the user to move only the 3D camera, with the effect of generating two distinct vanishing points, an approach that we call detached cameras. When this happens, hyperdepth can be perceived by the viewer in the form of geometry transformations. The 3D mesh generated by projecting a 4D object depends on the pose of the 4D camera. And so our next idea here involved uh, giving control over the 4D camera transform to the user as to enable him to arbitrarily manipulate 4D content. As an example, uh, the shape and trajectory of bullets can be dynamically altered just by moving the 4D camera, making it possible to hit targets around corners or to expand the bullet's collider in a specific direction. Uh, unfortunately though, uh, too many variables would have to be considered by the player in order to have full control of the camera, especially considering that this is just an overhead on top of the existing 3D mechanics. And so we decided to limit the movement of the 4D camera to an orbital trajectory in which the player simply controls the initial focus point and the camera angle. And then we added some in-game uh, visual aids to help him control these variables. Uh, then when it's finally time to switch back to curve section, we first gently interpolate the 4D camera pose as to match the 3D camera, and then we switch projection method um, as to make this transition as smooth as possible. While we didn't conduct a formal user study, we can discuss the challenges emerged during the development of Across Dimensions. Um, adding 4D elements uh, to the game, for instance, enabled us to create new interactions and gradually integrating them into an initial 3D environment definitely helped us with spatial orientation and storytelling. On the other hand, uh, the effects of 4D transformations uh, and camera projections are often hard to predict, making the design of new interactions uh, too reliant on trial and error approaches and consequently extremely uh, time consuming. Uh, in this sense, uh, it might be worth exploring uh, recommender systems uh, uh, to help the designer preview 4D behaviors and decide when it's convenient to apply them as opposed to using more standard 3D techniques. In terms of performance, uh, at least in our uh, current implementation, we observed uh, that every time an object goes through a 4D transformation, its projection into a 3D mesh needs to be recomputed, sometimes taking a big toll uh, on the frame rate. And this affected the choice of 4D content uh, in across dimensions, making us prioritize simpler geometry and having the player interact with only a few complex objects at a time, especially when in fast and projection mode. Uh, if you want to see some numbers, uh, uh, feel free to check the performance chart uh, in our paper. Uh, regarding user controls, we realized that the parametric explosion uh, in uh, camera parameters made it very cumbersome to create fast-paced applications that allow full control of both 3D and 4D cameras. Uh, our suggestion here is to try to select only a subset of these parameters uh, and in this sense, we actually believe that constraining the 4D camera movement uh, could actually help uh, the creation of more unique uh, applications. Uh, another thing worth exploring is the alternation of different projection methods for both performance and behavioral reasons, uh, possibly dedicating some effort to creating visual helpers uh, to guide the user, like we did with our 3D radar, uh, the 4D manipulation previews, and the orbital camera visual aids.
As a conclusion, we can say that despite science actually predicts the existence of higher dimensions, hypergraphics has historically been a very niche and difficult to approach research topic in which interest has rarely stemmed uh, from its potential usefulness, uh, maybe except for a few applications to crystallography and particle physics. In this holistic work, uh, we try to shift the focus uh, as to conceive a broader concept uh, of hyper-universe, uh, trying to encompass all major trade-offs uh, uh, and design considerations involved uh, with extending common 3D technologies with 4D mechanics. Uh, our use case, in this sense, uh, serve the purpose of uh, showcasing how 3D and 4D elements uh, can coexist uh, and interact with each other in a concrete application. Uh, and uh, here, in, uh, our goal uh, has been overall to make, the, um, to make higher dimensions a little bit more accessible, uh, hopefully inspiring other people to build new creative applications uh, that go beyond uh, our simple use case. Uh, I admit uh, that it's been a very fun uh, and different project for me, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy the presentation. Uh, thanks for listening, and feel free to reach out to me for questions.